Okay, uh, let's start. So uh, my name is Vitaly. I work at Grammarly at Core Services team. And today I'll tell you about uh, the story of development of uh, language model building pipeline. So the talk called how we build language models, but in fact, it's about, build, about, about one of them. It's uh, about an gram model, which uh, is uh, fast, fast and ha high capacity uh, language model. So it should be called probably building fast language models. And let's uh, play um, a small game. Could you finish the threads? Reserve. How many of uh, you said, said reserved? Probably half. Of um, that's actually how language model works. When you uh, know something, you hear, so you hear some uh, start of the uh, sentence or phrase, and you can guess next word. Let's try to more complicated example. Try to fill missing words here. Family. Who said family? Okay. Why you know this? Uh, you are almost there. Yeah. It's Leo Tolstoy. So, but you know this because you read this, right? And your your language model is trained. You memorize this, and it's exactly how. Uh, uh, AI language models are trained. Uh, I would say um, this is an example of system uh, which is uh, built on standard technology, so it's uh, probably this phrase would be a good description of it. Uh, but if you like, if you love Leo Tolstoy, you probably would be disappointed because uh, this talk more in Hemingway style. It's short. But it's light. Uh, second day of conference, I guess you're tired. Uh, so let's do it quick, and it will be easy. So uh, what is language model in more formal terms? It's just probability of a uh, sequence of words. For example, I love cats, sentence, uh, I love dogs, and they have some assigned probabilities. Uh, you can compute this, uh, and you can simplify this by uh, introducing some assumption. Uh, in our case, it's Markov assumption that state of the system depends on previous only on the previous state of the system. Or in more generalized form, it can be written like this. Well, it's probably the last uh, formula here. Um, and the example, example of n-gram language model, in this case of uh, trigram, so you split your sentence into uh, chunks of uh, length of three. S is just uh, markers of beginning and or and end of sentence. So we build. Uh, uh, this is a list of trigrams that are generated from this uh, sentence. Well, okay, that's another formula here, but formally it's not equation, so uh, the phrase of uh, Hawking is, does not apply to this. Uh, it's uh, when it, there are some problems with this because if you uh, uh, don't have three grams in your training set, right? You have to, uh, but you have to compute the probability or score if you if we're talking about approximation of language model by. Uh, but by doing some back off to the n-gram of lower ra rank, in this case to uh, b-gram. And uh, there are some, a lot of uh, algorithms of doing this. This one of the simplest called stupid back off. Um, because actually it's very, very, very simple, but uh, on large data sets it's pretty efficient. Um, there will be references on the 
end of this uh, talk. This is from Jurovsky book, famous. Uh, so how we build language model approximation? We get large corpora, uh, count and gram frequency, if you're talking about in gram language model, compute uh, some scores, uh, and uh, then we do in back off if uh, some n-gram not in the training set. It can be literally translated to Scala code. Uh, it's really simple to use a sliding iterator. And by this code, we actually can compute frequencies or counts of these n-grams. Uh, but there are a little issue with this code. Not just with code. Code is right. It's okay. But this thing doesn't scale for the large uh, data sets or large corpora, let's call it. Uh, so in, in our case, we need all n grams from, with rank from 1 to n, uh, whereas the n usually is close to 5. And when we uh, generate these tokens, uh, we have a lot of intermediate data in the process, which actually and multiply L, where L is the uh, size of the corpora. Corpora is just a fancy name which linguists give to data sets of documents. Uh, but in our case, we need to support up to trillion of tokens in tokens in input corpora, which give us about five trillions of tokens in the process, in the middle of the training. And also we want to support incremental training of this because we want to, uh, for example, we, we get another co large corpora and we need to enlarge the, our model, make, me, make, it, make, make this approximation uh, closer to ideal language model. So we need to... Uh, somehow scale the string. And for this we use a uh, very known uh, technology which is called Apache Spark. And our pipeline is very simple. It's a first step. We just get corpora, tokenize it, and store it into the format we call efficient intermediate representation. It's actually parquet-based data formal format, which stored in, in S3. It primarily designed to train n-grams, but also we train another supervised models on this. And it stores this in, in Apache parquet format. Uh, also, it's partitioned by, by range for data locality. Uh, it's very simple. It has a very simple structure. So we have some document identity. Here is like a URI. You can think about this like a, just a URI document. And we compute a uh, hash of this uh, document for, for storage efficiency. Uh, we, and the hash obviously have to be long enough to make probability of collision near to impossible. And uh, 128 bits is more than enough in this case. Also, we store sentence index, token index, or, or, right, sentence hash, and uh, basically the token, which is word or punctuation marks. Uh, this data structure has well, it's just an example how it's stored in Parquet, in Parquet files. Oh, it's, it's very simple, like, like this. So sentence, in the, sentence index, token index, and the token. And you can reconstruct original documents from this. And from other side, because of nature of this data, strings, 
and the strings that are uh, repeats a lot. So this one, this, this uh, as, as Sparkia, as you may know, is uh, columnar storage, and it, the, the compression applied by on the column level. So it can be effect efficiently compressed, which reduces load on, uh, which actually reduces I, I O. The next thing we do, we get this data and uh, do actual training, which is very simple. It's it may be considered as the simplest or most trivial uh, supervised uh, learning algorithm. Then we merge this to large engram, which we call engram master dataset. And the merge is actually trivial. You, you get key and uh, you sum values. You add values, right? It's linear. And uh, this is a huge adva advantage to be linear. If your function is linear, it makes your life simpler. Uh, <clears throat> how it looks in, uh, when we scale this? Basically, it's, uh, we use Spark SQL dataset API, which is typed, so group by sentence hash, apply aggregator, and then just count these tokens with typed with another aggregator which are uh, implemented by Spark itself, which is some some long. The aggregated is pretty trivial. So you get something that we call Nengram's buffer. Uh, and put tokens into it. Then merge. And on the finish, we generate. So in this, this in this way, we just collect the sentence and generate engrams from it. Uh, well, if you expect that some advanced data structures here, you will be disappointed because all we use here is array for obvious reasons uh, because. <laughs> You know, uh, when you run on hundreds of nodes in Amazon, you try to make it cheaper, right? And you do, do not want to overuse memory of, Spark no of these Spark executors which run this code. So it's, it's very simple at, and trivial thing. We allocate array and resize if it needed, if needed. So we get some, let's say, this, uh, the initial size is just tuned to, to uh, cover most common cases. For example, it's in, our si uh, in our case, it's around eight. So it's like a medium length of the sentence. And if needed, we resize this, but just by copying this uh, tokens into new array. That's it. Well, well, ah, okay. And also, we we need to uh, from this uh, array, we need to generate uh, actual engrams. It's, it's also very trivial procedure. It's in essence, it looks like this. It's not optimized where in, in, in real code it's a little bit more complicated, but it looks very simple. So um, what is the challenge, you may ask? It's really a trivial thing, right? Well, just a few lines of code. But on this scale, uh, you you have a lot of issues. Um, first one is I/O. When you write a lot of data, and try to write a lot of data from Spark 
in parquet, for it's, it's particularly in parquet format to S3, um, basically you have two options, to write it very slow or to write it on, on in very not in very on in unreli unreliable way. Th that's how two versions of parquet output committer uh, is implemented. So uh, we decided to store this intermediate. Uh, yeah, and, and also we have you have a lot of problem. You can have a lot of problem problems if you need speculative execu execution. By the way, who knows what is speculative execution in Spark and in general maybe. Uh, so I probably explain. It's when you you have uh, some task running, and they run slow. Spark decides uh, Spark can be configured to run another copies of this task, on, and they will probably schedule it to, an, to another to other executors. And if they complete faster than original tasks, original just killed. And in this mode, you have we have issues with writing uh, data to parquet in S3. So we don't do this. We write the data into HDFS, which are actually real file system with write guarantees, with atomic move, and so on. And do, uh, since we run on uh, Amazon EMR, and this it distributed with some nice utility which which, which, call, which, which is called S3 DCP. We copy when needed. We copy data from our transient transient cluster into S3. But it's not the whole story because S3 has also is not in some cases have issues S3 DCP. So we need to be configured to run reliably. Another issue is a uh, shuffle service of Spark. It, when you have hundreds of nodes and these hundreds of executors, and they shuffle that data at, because this this. Uh, task is, is this in, in gram calculation it's uh, shuffle intensive operation by its nature you can do better than shuffle data around it's it's a you have to do this in any case so all you can do this is to configure spark to uh, do this well the first thing is most trivial is to enable uh, Shuffle service, which, which means that shuffle service will run in uh, another instance uh, of GVM, different from uh, the executor, which makes this more reliable. Second thing is performance. Uh, unfortunately, some of the settings are not docu documented in the Spark documentation. Uh, you have to enable EPOL. You have to increase uh, thread pool for Netty because of the shuffle service is Netty based actually. And do some another tweaks related to uh, file system, especially if you run on Amazon and if you, if you have EBS drives. So it looks like this. Another, things I another thing is uh, tuning of garbage collector. It's pretty simple. So we use Juan GC for the reason I on the next slide. <laughs> uh, we tune a bi little bit uh, GC powers to trade latency for throughput. So pauses are longer, but GC have time to clean more. <coughs> on and uh, the most important thing is in our case because we have a, a lot of strings that are mostly belongs to the 
pretty compact dictionary. It's a string duplication. Well, when we compute on grams, well, we have we have at the, as output a large, very large data sets. It's like a hundreds of billions of n grams in it. And it's like n grams, n gram on frequency. So it's just a string. You can think of this as like a string and long value. Did this uh, split between uh, parquet, parquet columns, but for, sim for simplification, you can think like a string and uh, long value. Then we need it's uh, it's really huge, but we need to uh, deploy it somewhere, right? We need to use it and query this in some uh, some efficient way. So first thing we need to reduce the size of this. So we just have to throw throw out drop uh, n grams with low frequencies, which are corresponds to like a low probability sequence of uh, words. For this, we have a procedure which is called pruning. Uh, then we uh, compute quantiles just to have uh, some characteristics of, uh, this, uh, of distribution of these frequencies. And the most interesting part is converting to binary. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I probably refer you to uh, the talk of my colleagues, which they give, which they gave, uh, gave on the last DevOx conference, and I guess on the oh, what it called this conference. Okay, the link to the video in the end of the presentation. Basically, it's a perfect hash-based data structure, which allows to compress this uh, data and uh, deploy it. Uh, Pruning is pretty straightforward pr procedure. We create dictionary. We get uh, unigrams, which is just tokens, one token one word, and uh, form dictionary. And then we drop uh, uh, and grams uh, of which, are, which contains at least one out of vocabulary token. And then we cut the lowest uh, grams with lowest uh, frequency by some, by, by some threshold. Uh, Basically, so we come to conclusions. So the first one is <laughs> keep it simple. You don't need to introduce complexity where simple things work. And another important thing is to measure the everything you can measure with your cluster. Uh, in EMR, uh, I've, it's very convenient with uh, well, it, with uh, ganglia matrix. It has ugly interface, but it works. It it shows you distribution of load among uh, cluster nodes and a lot of other useful information. And make technical decision on properties of your da data and collected metrics. References. Uh, first, first one is, is classical, is third edition of classical book of Dan Jurovsky. Also, it's useful to uh, read the learning book, especially in NLP, if you're interested in NLP. Um, there are also there are a lot of uh, things uh, around 
neural networks and uh, neural, neural network based uh, language models uh, which I also which we also use and uh, they are described the adv advantages and disadvantages of engrams as a model also it's useful to read in depth about how Apache Parquet uh, works and the reference to uh, talks talk of my colleagues which describe uh, language model as a, as a service and performance uh, let's say how, how it works from performance uh, perspective Ah, okay. Yeah, you know why I'm there. We are hiring. <laughs> uh, so probably you can you can find this at the Grammarly site. Jobs. We are core services team. We do a lot of Java, and from recent time a lot of Scala. Um, so it's time for questions. If you have some. Hmm? Yeah, we we use uh, bidirectional LSTM, but it's uh, well, we have a team that do this. Uh, so it's a, I'm working in engineering team. And we have a team of researchers which uh, do, uh, uh, let's say, bleeding edge uh, technologies. So, uh, uh, and uh, for a lot of tasks, this still used. We, we use a lot of, of engrams. But for more complex tasks, we use uh, neural networks. Yeah, up to my talk. <laughs> uh, the questions from? Yeah. Um, what is your input data? Mm -hmm. Basically, this pipeline is corpora agnostic, so we it can be trained on any corpora. But what do you use? Uh, we use different, uh, the mixture of everything we can we can use. Okay. <laughs> A little question about your work. Uh, do you build uh, these models by uh, yourself uh, after giving, after receiving these models from R and D team or something, written mm -hmm. on Python or somewhere or something? Uh, or they just give you a model written in Scala and you take it and use this API or s prepared mm -hmm. library? Yeah. Uh, this language model was uh, traditionally built uh, by engineering team. This is, I guess, third, third reincarnation of this pipeline. Previously, well, this, this was more ad hoc, like building. Now it's uh, made uh, like a real pipeline with, uh, with um, workflow orchestration by Airflow and, and so on. Uh, so um, initially it was uh, written in uh, for Hadoop, as a Hadoop MapReduce jobs. Then, I guess four years ago, that was rewritten in uh, using Spark 1.4, I guess. Uh, in Java, and I guess, uh, and the latest one, which it, which is presented, is rewritten to Scala, and uh, with uh, it is no, it was not just a rewrite; it was redesign of this, and uh, we add uh, actually incrementality to this. The previous model was not incremental. 
and this was, was uh, and uh, also there was a lot of tweaks, like uh, more efficient data formats. I mean, Spark, yeah, and, and uh, latest version of Spark, it's reduced to 2.4 for this. And it's faster. It's really fast and it works. Uh, you said it's a third incarnation. Uh, yeah. What would you like to improve in fourth incarnation? Oh, it's a really good question. <laughs> I don't know. I actually uh, need to take a break from this <laughs> for some time <laughs> and rethink uh, uh, how we... Uh, uh, what we need to add is more, it's, it's, as always, it's more, more data cleansing because if you have garbage in, you have garbage out, right? So you, it's, a, it's always the, the, the part which should be, you, you cannot to be too, you cannot complete this <laughs> easily. Hi. Hey. Um, so did I understand correctly that you run Spark in EMR from Airfall, like you scheduled it in Airfall? And yeah, right. Uh, what do you use to communicate uh, Airflow with EMR? Do you use Levy or it's made uh, with the help of Amazon Steps? How it works? Uh, well, um, it's, uh, as I probably said, it's a transient cluster. So we just spin the cluster using Airflow, actually Airflow Steps run Terraform Terraform uh, pro provide do provisioning of the cluster. Uh, Airflow then using uh, its own functionality, so EMR sensors and so on. Uh, EMR sensor need to to get uh, the state of uh, the step. Um, uh, okay. So do you use like built-in uh, airflow functionality for yeah. sp spin up? Uh, yeah, for spin up and for communication. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's all. Because it maybe not built-in. It's like a contribution. Contribute. Mm -hmm. Other questions? If it's supported by the sources of data you have. Uh, uh, don't you want to adopt uh, adopt a streaming model, so you have a live model? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, well, I would say we don't need this because uh, we don't need to update this model as frequent as frequent as streaming processing will allow you to, to do. So basically, uh, it, it will be updated. I know. Given the uh, all downstream dependencies of this, we cannot up update it too often, as often as we as we want to, right? So, um, batch processing is good enough when you run the things once in months, for example, right? Hi, uh, you said that uh, you used uh, string the duplication in garbage one collector. Yeah. G1, and uh, did you measure footprint uh, before enabling it and after enabling it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, are me we measured this. Uh, we collected um, GC logs and analyzed this with a uh, nice utility which called GC plot before and after this. I cannot give you uh, now the exact numbers Right, but uh, it was like 20, 25 percent of improvement of reducing the heap size in, in our particular case. It's something like this. Hmm? Other question? So I guess we are done. Thanks for coming. Thank you.